Good morning, students. Welcome back to art class. It's almost Easter. I thought this would be a great time to teach you about one of the most important paintings ever created and to help teach you some really awesome new art skills. That painting is The Last Supper by Leonardo da Vinci. It was painted in 1498 during the Renaissance in Italy. Historians call the period before the Renaissance the medieval period. And you've probably all heard of that, where there were kings and queens and knights and castles. Medieval art was focused a lot on the Bible and Christianity, and its style was called iconographic. It was not very realistic, as you can see, but it's really amazing and beautiful. During the Renaissance, which means rebirth, artists, philosophers, and scientists tried to rediscover knowledge from the Greek classical period. They also came up with a lot of new ideas for making art. Paintings became a lot more natural and realistic, and they invented something called perspective. Now this takes us to Leonardo da Vinci and he is perhaps most famous for the Mona Lisa. But after that, or perhaps equally, he is known for the Last Supper. Now this uses a new art technique at the time called One Point Perspective. And with this, it looks like you are really there in a room. All of the lines in the drawing go back to a single point. And guess what? That's what I'm gonna teach you today. It's actually pretty simple. And once you learn it, it's an amazing art skill to expand what you can do. So before I take you through it step by step, I just wanna tell you a few more things about the last summer. The Leonardo da Vinci was what we call a Renaissance man. He did everything. He was an artist, an illustrator, a scientist, a mathematician, a sculptor, and he wrote. He loved to experiment and try new things. Sadly though, with The Last Supper, he wanted to try a new way of painting. Normally, painters would create frescoes on walls. That means that they used tempera paint, they mixed it with eggs, and they painted it right on to wet plaster. Da Vinci, he wanted to try with The Last Supper painting on dry plaster. And he actually did something that you're not supposed to do. He mixed tempera paint and the new kind of paint called oil paint. And what happened then is that even a few years after he painted it, the painting began to late and come apart. It was very sad. By the mid 1900s, the painting was in very bad shape. So people had to do art restoration. Art restoration. That means when people who are trained to do it take old paintings and they restore them. They try their best to bring them back to the state of when the artist first painted it. So well, what we see today is only a faint image of what it would have been right when da Vinci painted it. It's still in a lot better shape now. So while you're starting to look at this painting, I wanted to put out a few questions for you. What do you think this painting shows? What moment in the Bible do you think da Vinci was trying to capture? Is Jesus painted differently than the apostles? What do you think this means? Why did Leonardo da Vinci do this? So art historians think this painting shows a few moments in the Bible all at once. Most historians say the main moment it captures is right after Jesus told his disciples that one of them would betray him. The disciples look shocked and distressed. However, Leonardo painted many details that lead us to other moments as well. Jesus is reaching with both hands towards the cup of wine and the bread. What does this mean? Let's hear God's word. As they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed and broke it, gave it to the disciples and said, take and eat it, this is my body. Then he took a cup and after giving thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sin. This is showing the first Lord's Supper when Jesus describes the new covenant in his blood and shows the act of communion for us to always remember what he has done for us. Another really interesting detail in the painting is with Jesus and Judas's hands. 
In Matthew 26, 23, Jesus said, the one who dipped his hand with me in the bowl, he will betray me. So Leonardo da Vinci does a really interesting thing. When he's showing Jesus's hand reaching towards the cup of wine, it is also reaching towards the same bowl that Judas's hand is reaching towards. So we can clearly see that this is a reference to that passage. And lastly, I think the most amazing thing about this painting is about the one point perspective that I'll teach you in this lesson. So in one point perspective, there is a center point. In the Last Supper, that center point is right at Jesus's face. All the lines lead to Jesus. He is at the center. Jesus' expression is also calm and serene, and his body actually forms a perfect equilateral triangle, which means equal on all sides. In contrast, the apostles are shown with dramatic expressions on their faces, and their bodies turning every which way, and their arms up in wild gestures. Why do you think Leonardo did this? The apostles represent us as a whole in this painting people. In scary moments, we can be confused and worried. We're in the midst of drama. But Jesus is God. He's perfect. And even in the chaos of this moment, he knows all. And he is here to comfort us. So now I'm going to do a step-by-step -step drawing with you and teach you how to do a simple way of creating one-point perspective. So get your pencil and paper out and follow along. Okay, so now we can start our lesson on one-point perspective. If you can see here, I made a drawing of the Last Supper without the people in it, so you can see the perspective lines more easily. Here is the center point and all the lines are drawn coming from that point. So now I can show you how to do it yourself. So let's get started. With one point perspective, it all starts with one point. And you wanna to try to put that in the center of your paper. Then you wanna draw lines lightly to start with so you can erase them. You wanna draw lines coming out from the center point to all the corners of your paper. And you draw them really lightly to start with so you can erase them. Okay, so next for this drawing, you will draw a rectangle in the middle. And you do that by connecting the lines like this. I'm trying to make them parallel with the top of the paper or each side of the paper. There. So I'm not sure if you can tell at this point, but this will be the back wall of the room. And then we'll put those windows in there too, but not quite yet. Next. Now, when I'm making my perspective lines, I'm always going back to that center point. So here now, I can start to make the effect of some kind of crown molding at the top of the wall. And so I started it from where this line for the back wall starts and then went out towards the edge. Now you can see those double lines. Next, I'm gonna do that same thing for the bottom of the wall. And if you notice, this is on the inside of that side of the rectangle. I didn't do it from the outside. I did it from the inside. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Always going back to the center point. Okay, so next I go back to the center point again and I'm gonna start to draw the tops of some panels on the wall. Each time I draw these to make it look like it's in perspective, I'm drawing it a little bit longer and I'm making the gap in between them just a little bit bigger. Okay, I'm gonna do that same thing on the other side. Okay, so next I can draw vertical lines going down from the lines I just drew. And you still want to draw kind of lightly at this point because you're going to have to erase some of these. And you want these lines to be parallel to each other as much as possible. Okay, so now that you've drawn all these lines coming down from these lines, you can draw the bottom line. 
Then I can do the other side. Now it really looks three-dimensional. So now we can draw our table. So I'm drawing the line a little bit above where the bottom of the window is, and this will be the top of the table. Then, for the perspective, the rest of the top of the table is kind of skinny, so you really wanna make your line. For mine, I think it should be right around where I had drawn that bottom line for the rectangle of the back of the room, but yours could be a little bit different. So here now, I'm going to draw a longer line. It's longer on both sides. And now, to make the perspective, I'm gonna go back to that center point and find the end of that line and make it go to where it stops at that upper line for the top of the table. Now, it looks like the table's going back in perspective. So here, we can do it on the other side. Now that you have these other lines, it's kind of confusing. So what you can do is start to erase them. I'll erase those a little bit better when I start to go over my lines with a marker, but now you can see the top of the table a little better. Next, to make it easier, we can make the bottom of the table go all the way down to meet the floor. So you don't have to worry about drawing any table legs or people's feet. And here's a way you can draw the bottom of a draped tablecloth. You make a wavy line. And some of the waves can be a little smaller, others can be bigger to make it look more realistic. Then you can erase all those lines. Okay, great. Now you can really see that that's a table with a tablecloth. And what you could do next is draw little lines to make it look like it's a curtain. Instantly, it looks like it's draped. Next, you can lightly draw those back windows that will be behind Jesus and the apostles. It kind of gives a light behind Jesus that looks like a halo. So here we go. Now, we're gonna draw Jesus and the apostles. Now, when you're drawing Jesus and the apostles, I think it would be best for you to draw from your imagination with reference to the Last Supper because I think it would be too much to expect you to draw Lake Da Vinci, but you want to keep these things in mind. But what you want to focus on is drawing Jesus with his head and his hands in a triangular shape. You want to make sure there is a cup of wine and a piece of bread for each of the disciples. And you want to try to draw the disciples with different expressions on their faces. And I will let you interpret that how you want. And you wanna to try to have them overlapping, inspired by Da Vinci. Now he placed the apostles in groups of three. You can do that if you would like to. So here we go. I don't need this is. <laughs> And here's an extra step you can do where you can add in the lines for the ceiling tiles and for the floorboards. Always going back to that center line. I hope you enjoyed following along learning one point perspective and I can't wait to see your drawings.